Okay, this is part two of the CART discussion. So CART, remember, stands for classification or reg and regression trees. So um, the first video talked about classification trees. Now I'm going to talk about a regression tree. And uh, we're going to use the salary data set that we looked at uh, a little bit ago. And uh, just to remind you, uh, this looked at salaries at a, uh, a university. Um, I think it was a business school. And they were part of a lawsuit um, as well as an investigation about how men and women were paid uh, differently. So if you wanted to make a super simple model of the entire data set, we could just assume that everyone earns the mean. We could later then split that. But looking at the data, I'm only going to look at two variables here, years since PhD and years of service, just because it makes the graph uh, there. And I simplified the variable names, and I also took the salaries and divided by the thousand. So on the left will be the tree that we make here in a second. On the right is our chart with our splits. So if we do our super simple naive model, not even a naive Bayes model, we just assume that everyone makes $113,000. Yes, that's way more than Truman faculty make. Don't rub it in. If you examine this model, the RMSE is the standard deviation because we don't have any splits. And uh, that works out to be about 30. If you remember, RMSE um, is similar to standard deviation. And so you can sort of imagine that most of the data falls within two RMSEs or standard deviations. So if our prediction is 113, but most of the data falls within $60,000, that's not actually a very good model. That's a big error. All right, so now we can go ahead and make our tree. And again, I'll show you in a little bit how to make the tree in R. Um, but we go ahead and run the tree. And we look at our first split. So again, this was a naive Bayes, and it went in and looked at how we could reduce the RMSE by the most, right? For classification trees, we look at improving accuracy. For regression trees, we improve RMSE. And the split point was year since PhD at <laughs> 12 and a half years. And what happens if we split on that point um, we see that now our two means are actually quite different, $123,000 and $88,000. So that's a lot. Our RMSE has gone from $30,000 down to $25,000. That's actually a pretty big uh, jump. So now we look at each half separately and we see how we can split. So first we'll look over here. So for those who have worked less than eight and a half years, uh, we can now split that further. It's just a coincidence that we're using the same variable here. Remember, I only put two variables in the model. But what we can see is that the model did improve from 25.76 RMSE to 25.45. That's not a great improvement. And in fact, that's more common to what you'll see. So if that were the case, we would only have this part of the tree and we don't have any of that yet. Anyway, that's that split. When we add one more split, now that's going to be people whose PhD is more than 45 and a half. And it's a little bit funny that those people actually make less. But if you remember the chart from last time, the chart did kind of curve back down. Okay, so that's now the second level of the tree. And now we're going to split again on um, over here between uh, 21 and a half years. So there's going to be a line drawn right there. And oops, I went too far. And when we did that, you can see here again it goes. The RMSE continues to get better. Now we go to the next one, and now years of service become an important variable. And you can see now it splits going this way instead of uh, vertically, instead of horizontally. And you can see that that now does have a difference. And again, unsurprisingly, those who had experience somewhere else before they came uh, did earn a little bit more uh, than the others. And we can do the other chart over here, and that splits this one up here um, to do sort of a similar thing. Notice this one splits the other direction, which is sort of interesting. And then we can keep going, splitting more and more times. And um, we do that until we hit a certain uh, level of precision with the RMSE. The way this one is set up um, is that when the RMSE quits improving by more than 0.1, it stops. And that's something that R calculates on the inside. All right. So you can see how the RMSE has come down from 30 down to 23 and a half. 
And we might be interested to compare that to the regression model we made last time in the other video. And if we do that, and here I'm using the cross-validated fit uh, calculation that we used uh, last time, what you see is um, for the uh, classification tree, the R part or the CART model, our uh, cross-validated RMSE is 25.9. Notice that it's a little bit higher than this one because we are doing that thing with the random slices, the folds, uh, to make 10 uh, different uh, subsets of the data. If we do the same thing with regression, however, there the cross-validated RMSE is 27 and a half. So the CART model actually beats it um, by a pretty fair bit. If it, you know, you think of that uh, plus or minus two standard deviation idea, that's better by $3,000. That's pretty good. And that's only using these two variables. If we had used more variables, we could have gotten an even better model. Again, mathematically, statistically, nothing hard is going on here. Computationally, it is hard because we're going to be doing a billion of these simple slices to see which one works best. Um, I tried to make a three-dimensional graph. It didn't work out all that well. But the idea that the linear model makes a single kind of diagonal slice and the cart model makes a whole bunch of rectangle slices that are more precise. Now, the other question is to figure out how far down you want to go. And like I said, it has kind of an automated place to stop, but you can play with that in the options. So here's one um, that tries to overfit the model. And what's sort of interesting about that is the one we found before had the same cross-validated error. But when we find the deeper model, the really tall tree, um, what we see is that there's not actually as much <clears throat> uh, good prediction. This, the cross-validated RMSE is actually way bigger. So that's that same idea of overfitting that we talked about before. So um, there are several different algorithms for how to stop. You can make a tree that stops when each one has some number of data points. Um, what R actually does is it makes a larger tree and then it prunes it back in order to minimize uh, the RMSE. Um, and it does do a penalized criteria like we talked about with the, la the lasso model. And in the end, it tries to give you the best model that it finds. Again, because it works so quickly, um, you can go ahead and do it that way. Now to pop back to classification problems for a minute, I just want to show you what it looks like. Um, it now looks at the accuracy using what it calls the Gini index, which is a measure of that accuracy. So I'm going to flip the problem using the same data set. So now I'm going to predict uh, gender using salary and years uh, since PhD, since that was the one that worked better before. And what you can see is the first slice is sort of sad that anyone who makes less than uh, I'm sorry, anyone who makes more than $78,000 is predicted to be male. Sure. And again, um, that's sort of weird. We add our next slice. Now anyone who's had their PhD less than 28 years, uh, I'm sorry, anyone who has their PhD more than 28 years is assumed to be male. And again, those are those senior people who don't make very much. They were all male. So this rectangle and this rectangle are both predicted to be male. And now all we're left with is this little one, which we split one more time and now those in this box right here are predicted to be female. Now you can see that um, that does have more black spots than red spots, but it is sort of uh, funny. We can make that confusion matrix, again, where we see how it works. Um, we don't actually do very well in this model, predicting sex based on salary and years of service. Um, only six of the 39 uh, females in the model were correctly predicted. Um, overall, it is better in predicting, but it's not very good at predicting the ones that we want. Going back to that earlier uh, chart we had, what that means is it has poor positive predictive value or precision, which is the term that we use for that. Um, and in fact, if you wanted to predict uh, something with this data, predicting rank based on salary and discipline actually comes out very, very good. Um, and it gives you a good, um, model. This is also a good example because it has three categories, not two. So the magic of trees, again, is that they run so quickly. Um, the fact that we had to do a million of the trees doesn't slow it down at all. The third video um, that we're going to do here for CART is going to walk you through doing that in R, which should set you up to do the lab pretty well. The lab video will also be um, uploaded. One last point. 
Cart was actually a registered trademark for a very long time. Because of that, in our studio, it's not called a cart, it's called a recursive partition or an R part. It doesn't really matter, but it's one of those things that will mess you up. So, all right, I'll see you in the next video here in uh, just a second.